to recognize it had nothing to do with your ability to fish and everything to do with what God was doing. Oh, come on. It had nothing to do with your talent. Nothing to do with your ability. It had everything to do with God. And, and, and all of a sudden, it's the Lord. And, and guess what? He directed that not to, not to, not to Simon or Nathaniel or some of the other, other, uh, other disciples. He directed that to Peter because Peter had just denied the Lord. And he had thought in his mind, how could God ever use me? I let him down. And here, John prophesied it's the Lord just like what happened to you to your daughter it's the Lord mom come on it's the Lord what does that do what does that do when someone you love recognizes this is not you it's not your imagination it's not your brokenness it's not your just your own will it's the Lord oh come on see you know what keeps me coming here every Thursday night it's the Lord it is not me. I would like to be asleep. I would I would have liked to have already gone to Maui. Come on, honestly. And, but but I'll go to Maui tomorrow, the day day of the conference. I would have liked to have a day just to just to enjoy Maui. But, and then turn around and come back for the conference. But guess what? You do things when it's the Lord God. And, and it all of a sudden causes you to stand up. Because when Peter heard, it was the Lord because he directed to the Lord. It said he gird himself. Everyone say gird himself. Which means that's what he did. He picked himself up. Because that means that God, you care about me. You haven't forgotten me in my denial. You, you still remember me in my mistakes. You, you didn't reject me when I told you I wouldn't deny you and then I denied you. You're still after me. I, you're still pursuing me. And it picked his spirit up. Yes, Lord. Good. What's interesting what happens is when his spirit picks up, now they're pulling in this catch, this massive catch. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Peter jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. Now, I want to tell you something. The last time Peter was in the in the water. He sunk. <laughs> Remember that? He got his eyes off Jesus. He sinks. And now he jumps out of the boat and swims to shore. Now we don't know how long it was, 100 yards, 800 yards. But it was it was it was far enough where they could hear the Lord's voice, but they couldn't see his figure or so because of the early morning fog. And, and, and so it could have been up to a half a mile away in the early morning, Jesus shouting, cast your net on the right side. So he could have swam up to a half a mile. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what would make, so the fact that Peter sunk tells me something. He didn't know how to swim. So, what would break his fear of water? What would break the fact that last time I sunk? I mean, Jesus helped me walk, but I was walking with Jesus then. What would make him jump out of the water? I'm going to tell you something. When it's God, when you hear it's the Lord, you'll jump out of your fear. You'll jump out of your inconvenience. You'll jump out of your comfort zone. You'll even jump out of the last season that you were in because experience said you you sank, but the Lord said, but it's the Lord. Come on. Yes. Oh, come on. Because here's the reality. Because if I'm afraid of what happened in the last season, I'll never step out and do what I never thought I could do. Yes. And so guess what? All of a sudden, this man who didn't know how to swim is now buoyant in the water and now swimming the shore so fast that he beats the boat. So it tells me when it's the Lord, we can physically, emotionally, and spiritually do things that we never thought we could do because it's the Lord doing it through us. So if, as, as he then then comes to the shore because Peter's so passionate. The Lord, you're thinking about me. You, you, you want me? It's the Lord. But here's what happens. It says, when they landed, they saw a fire burning with coals, with fish on it, and some bread. 
So Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. Now, you have to understand something. When Peter got to the shore first, where was Jesus? He's at the shore waiting to feed Peter. Not waiting to say, why you denied me? Why, why you did this wrong? Waiting to restore him by the fire. Because I believe that the reason God has the citadel church here is we want people restored by the fire of God. Yes, yes. Restored by the fire of God. He's sitting there with a meal to restore Peter. But it's interesting that, that when they brought the cat in, the Bible says there was 153 fish. Everybody say 153. 153. Well, I looked up that that word, uh, 153, because in the Hebrew, numbers are letters, and if you put the numbers with the letters together in the Hebrew, now I know the, you know the New Testament was written in Greek, but if you put those numbers in Hebrew, because they were Hebrews, 153, there's interesting that what it means. It means Lord over creation. Yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, then the Lord is over Tucson. Yes. Lord, the Lord is over Tucson. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want us to pray that every single morning. Lord, you're over Tucson. You're over drug abuse. You're over homelessness. You're over crime. The Lord over creation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They all knew it. It had to be God. Why would the Bible put the word 153, ladies and gentlemen? It's to tell us that he's the God over creation. And if I just get on the right side of the boat, he will show himself as the Lord over creation. Yes, Lord. So, here's what happens. He doesn't come to put Peter on probation. He says, come and have breakfast. Because he has one purpose, Meliana. We're storing Peter. He, he, he wants to have a moment with Peter. And in the context of Jesus reinstating Peter, he says these famous words. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Because I get reminded of this every single week by my wife. I find I'm so bad she does. I get reminded of this conversation all the time. Because it was Sunday night, this past Sunday night, I had already prophesied for two hours over a whole bunch of people. And I was done. And I handed her the mic and 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 I thought I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to the hotel and rest. And then Meliana makes an announcement. If you haven't been prophesied over, my husband will pray for you. <laughs> and we have, it was already like 11 o'clock when we started at 6. And it was already 11 o'clock at night. And, and at first, you, you know, I, 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 I wanted to, like, no, honey, I don't want to. I don't want to, but I, I don't know you, you. My, my, your, your, your mouth wants to say something, but your conscience says something else. That time the conscience won. Come on. I didn't want to violate my conscience. But I kept thinking about that incident because why? Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your tiredness? Do you love me more than your denial? Do you love me more than your mistakes? Come on, do you, do you love me more than sin? Do you love me more than your failures? Do you love me more than anything else? That's what I want to know. Now, it's interesting that when Peter, Peter says that, he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. What does he say? Feed my lambs. In other words, John, no matter how tired you are, there is a time of rest. But right now, these people have been waiting four hours. Come on. And, 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 and they've been waiting for four hours. And you're going to allow your tiredness to 
to stop you from feeling that. No, I'm not. God, forgive me. Feed my lambs. Then he says it again. Simon, he said, I'm John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Yes, yeah. That's when he shows up love for me. Because, because this is how you want to demonstrate your demonstrate your love for me. Yeah. It's not feeding your fears. Why? Not feeding what you think. Not feeding your problems. Yeah. Not feeding cancer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, you gotta hear this 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 podcast I listened to on the way here. This lady was telling her how you can get healed by the way you think. Absolutely. The, 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 she was talking about people who were dealing with cancer and the way they, 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 they did a test. She's a psychologist. They did a test to the people who thought I don't have cancer. They miraculously got healed. Come on. I'm telling you. And so it says, it says take care of my sheep. I put them in your care. And you're busy out there fishing, bro? Because you made a mistake. Don't let your mistake stop your calling. Amen. Now, third time, he says, Simon said, John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because he asked him a third time. But let me just tell you something you may not be aware of. Jesus, the first time, first time, the two times in the Greek, said, Peter, do you agape me? Do you agape me? I mean, do you have the love of God for me? But the third time, what Peter, Peter had said, when he used the word love, he used he used the word final, which means I love you like a friend. I love you like a friend. Because Peter couldn't tell God that he had a God made love. Couldn't tell him. Couldn't tell him like that. His heart couldn't do it. Because he he couldn't he couldn't say, I love you like I should. Yeah. So I can only love you like a friend. But that third time, when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He used the word Philo, Mariana, because this is exactly what he said. Peter, I want you to agape me, but I'll take the love that you have. And I'll work with that. Jesus. If that's all you can give me, mm-hmm. I'll take it. Yes, Lord. If all you can give me is final, I'll take that because that's better than no love. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Which means that some, sometimes our love is so shallow. Mm-hmm. It's so shallow. But do you love me? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and he was willing to stoop to where Peter's level was. But how many know that at that moment, when Peter was hurt because he said, Peter loved me, he said, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. Yeah. And at that moment, at that moment, at that, that moment of encounter that Peter had with Jesus, I can tell you right now, maybe at that moment, Peter loved Jesus as a friend, but there was something that happened to Peter. At that, at that shore, there was a fire that was placed in him. There was an unquenchable fire that was planted on the inside of him, ladies and gentlemen, that after that incident, his love grew. His love grew. His love didn't stay the same after that encounter. And I don't know about you, but see, I, 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 can, see how many, I can see how many people we have or how many people we don't have. And I have to understand that, that really the definition of being successful is that are we raising up men and women that love like that? Are we going to grow in our love? Are we going to grow in our commitment? Because Peter didn't stay like that, Meliana, because it looked what happened. In the very place 
that he denied Christ in Jerusalem with, with, with a Pharisee and a 12 year old girl actually I know you're one of them I know you're one of those guys and he denies him three times because he's so afraid of he, himself by getting arrested how many know that, that a few days later at the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell all of a sudden he stands up in Jerusalem and preaches a message and 3,000 people get saved you know what that's when his love grew he, he, now he was unashamed. He didn't care about the backlash. He didn't care whether whether the people would attack him because his love had grown to a place where now, Lord, I love you with an agape love. I don't know about you tonight, but how many want to love with an agape love? I want the agape love. I want. I don't want to just love halfway. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to just love when everything is going good. I want to love in the heat of pressure. Because when I do that. When I do that, because how many know that you know what? He's Meliana. Peter is still. Peter is still feeding his lamb. Peter is still yeah. taking care of his sheep. Mm -hmm. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to feed. Yes. And I'm going to take care. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your work. Yes, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing even right now within the sound of the world. Yes, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you are raising up men and women mm -hmm. in this church that are going to love you, not just with words, yes, Jesus. Yes. but with action. Yes, Lord. Because we've had a lot of words. But we need action. We demonstrate our love for you by our action. We also demonstrate our love for you by how we live. And Lord, right now, right now, we want the God over creation, that 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 shame Jesus that that specifically caused them to catch on the on the Sea of Galilee 153 fish to, to demonstrate the Lord. He was the Lord of creation. We ask you that tonight that you would be Lord over Tucson. Yes, Lord. And that we, because honestly, the reason why the the reason why the city is in the condition that it's in is. People feed themselves more than they feed the land. Because, Lord, it's not the homeless problem. It's what kind of the problem is what kind of city produces homeless. Yes. This is being produced. This is being birthed. Why is that? Because we're not feeding. We're not taking care of. If you love the city and you love this family and you love, you love the Lord, I want you to stand up right yes, now. I want Lord. you to stand up right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. I love the city. I love the Lord. I, am. Lord. <clears throat> I love the city. I love the To the Lord, I, I, I can sit in my house up on a ridge. Please, completely be oblivious to the needs of people living in my world of jet setting. To the Lord, I've got to be reminded every single day why you do what you do. Because people are starving. Not necessarily from food, but from truth. And the biggest problem is how can we how can we how can we run a city? How can we run a church? How can we be your people without authenticity? When Peter became something he wasn't. 
denier, a liar. He, he stepped out of authenticity and stepped into fear. But you came back, you came to the shore, you came and you restored Peter's authenticity. Because Lord, we want to be authentic, we want to be real, we want to be absolutely real. Who in this room wants to love God the way he wants you to love him? Let me see your hand. I want to love him the way he wants me to love him. I want to love him. Robert, could you come and move this pulpit for me, please? tonight and you say, oh Jesus, I want to love you with an agape love. I want to love you with a supernatural love. I want to love you enough that I step out of my comfort zone. I said, even in my broken experience in my past, I would step out of that and I would love you fully and love you wholeheartedly. Yes. There's a fire at this altar. May this church be the fire, an altar of love where people get restored by the fire and they get restored there. In the name of Jesus. If that's the cry of your heart, on the count of three, I want you to run to this altar. One, two, three. Come right now.